Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young if you're new here and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this black and white landscape of a cute little cottage maybe somewhere in Europe with some potted plants and a stone um, road and or walkway. So I just made this up. I just wanted to take all uh, my favorite types of things and try to incorporate them into one painting. I hope you guys enjoy this one and paint along. Feel free to use any color that you want later on to filter over and I'm going to start with a large filbert brush here titanium white and black and just come in with two lines this, this will just be the beginning stages of our doorway and then I'm going to do a line on the top I was going to make it slightly arched and kind of make it sort of a more of a oriental um, style and then I changed it part way in between. I tend to do this when I'm kind of just experimenting with my intuitive paintings. So they always transform into something else. And I like to share my process with you guys so that you kind of get some insight into how I come up with my paintings. And um, that I don't often use uh, reference photos. I like to make things up. And I think that makes things more artsy and have more flair to them and more personality. Sometimes uh, when you work from a reference photo, it can be really, really helpful, of course especially when you're just beginning um, to paint and learning how um, things look and how um, uh, the form of a, a body or animal or structure will look so it's it is important to do that sometimes but when you get a little bit more comfortable you can really enjoy the process of using your imagination and incorporating that along with what you've learned so I'm going to add some crown molding here to the top of this door another one that's wider above that I'm going to make a little angle make it diagonal on either side come in with the steps and then we'll work up from this point you can see how I've added my steps a little bit shorter and narrower at the top and then they're going to get wider and then pull out kind of along towards the right side and make them a little bit wider as they get down to the bottom here and this road or walkway is going to have just stones inlaid in it and all I'm doing is taking advantage of that round end that the filbert brush has and I'm just making floppy looking little <laughs> pancakes or oblong shapes um, all different make some of them small some of them uh, make them all different sizes so that it looks more realistic don't try to create too much of uh, a pattern with just a little bit of water and paint left in my brush I'm gonna faintly start coming in with a suggestion of the window here on the right side add a little uh, cross um, in the center there for the grid or the trim and just brushing lightly up and down to create a little bit of uh, highlight there a soft glow and then later on when we come in with our blue it, that'll stand out and kind of gradiate from dark to light but you can see now I've added a few more lines I've got a little indication of a window over off to the right side. It's very faint right now. I'm going to come in with some more detail after, add a window box. I'm going to also add a shutter on the side and it'll be open so it'll be kind of on a slant. And I'm going to come in with just some more lines here blocking in. Super, super easy. Um, starting with indications of some potted plants here i want them to be different heights and different shapes so some of them are going to be more round and short and other ones are going to be a lot taller and narrower and then we'll just pull and kind of scoop and sweep across to give it more of that textured 3d rounded effect we're also adding a highlight at this time so pay attention to just one side that you want to have your light on if you want to have your light coming from starting from the center then it is going to hit the left side of the pots on the right side and the right side of the pots on the left side if that makes sense um, and that way you can kind of get a really nice glow and a focal point kind of drawing your eyes into the center of a painting when you make the light source come from the center like that it's kind of my preferred choice in my paintings and I'm going to just add a few more little lines here. This may be covered up later on with some foliage. I'm not really sure yet at this point. I'm just having fun and playing around and experimenting. Um, I don't like to leave this out of the video because I would like you guys to have the option too. You can see um, a few different things that I do. And then sometimes I'll paint over them. But you guys can decide if you like the way it was before and add that in your own painting. 
I'm gonna make it look like there's kind of twisted vines going around those posts on either side um, about the door frame there and uh, add some little po uh, little flowers and little pots down below there as well we're really just gonna have fun and make this a, a quaint and charming fun little uh, entrance way and have lots of curb appeal this painting um, in particular is inspired by all my Greece and Tuscany um, paintings that I've been doing over the last couple months. Um, if you guys haven't seen them yet, be sure to check them out on my um, uh, playlist. I've got a fantasy playlist and I've also got um, acrylic painting for beginners. So there's quite a few uh, painting tutorials, lots of colorful ones, lots of black and white ones, something for everybody and for all skill levels. So have fun um, painting along and if you haven't already joined the Facebook, my Facebook group where you can, it's free and you can share, um, post your versions from all my tutorials and share with everybody what you've learned and um, your twist on my paintings. So I love to see all of your guys' um, paintings. I'm really proud to see all of your hard work and I uh, love to see all the talent out there. You guys are super talented. So thanks for sharing and I welcome you guys to join. I am working with a smaller filbert brush now. Um, throughout this painting, I'll be using a flat brush, filbert brush, liner brush, some mop brushes, um, even a little rake fan brush. Those are really cool brushes. I like to try and incorporate those in a lot of my tutorials so you guys can see all the different ways you can use those and take advantage of them. They're just wonderful brushes. I've got mine at Michael's, but you can find them at, online at Amazon, lots of art stores. Um, so uh, I really recommend adding that to your collection of, of brushes and you guys will see why in the next few videos that I'm uh, posting using that brush. Um, I'm just going to start coming in and adding some more details now and that's why I've used, I've switched over to this smaller brush. So this enables me to be able to make more fine lines and smaller details um, overall making this painting really stand out and have uh, more detail and look more 3D. So I'm going to um, make some more highlights and work on the um, window frame here and then I'm going to just go over the grid here the little trim and the window grid and I don't care that it's not perfectly straight you guys know that that's why I like to um, not sketch things out or use traceables I like to freehand I like that it adds character when something's a little bit crooked in a painting um, that's just my personal preference and style just in case you guys are wondering why I approach the paintings my paintings this way But I have no problems at all with anybody wanting to sketch theirs out or use traceables and whatever gets you guys painting and helps you along in your process is totally fine um, So you can see here. I'm just on an angle pulling and sweeping and curving over uh, This adds a lot of character to a painting and it's really fun. Um, I kind of just really like this um, uh, brush technique this uh, kind of style I use it a lot on my trees and for foliage and adding pretty um, uh, floral vines growing up on things um, I'm gonna be adding some more bright highlights here defining this area a little bit more and if you really want a straighter edge to your lines that you're adding around your door and above for all that crown molding and trim and everything you can use a flat brush that will give you more of that uh, fine straight line and edge if you want that i'm going to add a little circle here i just decided without thinking too much about it i thought I, if i didn't like it i could just take it off or paint over it so i'm going to create a little fun cir circular window here first in white and then i'm going to clean it up and add some shadow edges here with some black I'll add a grid in be or inside of that like it did on the window on the right side. Um, later on I'm going to be adding a little bit of flowers kind of just growing and coming down from that window. I added a little handle there super easy just a little white dot and then a little line that goes under right below and kind of goes in a little curve. And then to make it look more 3D a little bit of black for a shadow on the left side of it.
Okay, for the next few minutes, what I'm going to do is um, kind of fine tune my shadows here and work on my contrast a little bit more. So I'm coming in on the far side, the opposite side of our highlight side with straight black. I'm going to pull in a little bit here. Um, and it's not really going to matter eventually because you can see um, the finished painting has a bunch of foliage covering that up. So if you don't want to bother with that step, you don't have to. It is a good exercise if you're a beginner painter and you want to learn more techniques, you can do that. Just know that it's going to be covered up later on. And I'm going to go in and around, weaving around these stones with a little bit of black, um, kind of separating the stones a little bit, creating more light and shadow and depth. Okay, so for the shutter here, I outlined in black and I pulled three on a slant lines using my filbert brush. Again, you can use the flat brush if you want a really straight, more square look to your lines. And then kind of outlined around the shadow with a little bit of that light uh, color, off-white kind of grayish color. I'm going to come right inside this window and start adding my lines for my window grid. And re-highlight, redefine this shape a little bit more. See, I'm just going to be going over all of my um, trim here, all above the door frame. All these accent pieces going over cleaning them up adding more white to make them really nice and bright i'll be following down below on the pots again those planters and some of the stones and maybe some of the stairs as well just decide if you want to have or you can decide how bright you want your painting to be especially if you're going to be adding blue over top i would really recommend that now if you the brighter you want your painting to be and the more light and glow you want it to have after it's all dry then add more white now it may be a little bit trickier to do that later on you can you can definitely do it but I think it's just more satisfying to get it right uh, the first time before you add your glaze or your filter color filter over at the very end when it's all dry so I wish that I would have if I could change anything I'd go back and add another layer or two of white where I want my brightest highlights to be that would give my painting a little bit more um, light and life to it and just that overall sense of uh, a glow and I like I really like it when a painting has that glow and it creates a mood and kind of just pops out so I that's what I would really recommend right now guys take the time to do a couple extra coats of a uh, bright titanium white for your highlights um, unless you want your painting to be more nighttime or subdued then you don't have to do as many so I'm just going to go over here again just using a little filbert brush. I didn't use a whole lot of brushes for this painting. Um, I use a little mop brush and a rake brush like I mentioned. Uh, maybe a little liner brush here and there but you can definitely do this entire painting with a filbert brush. You could create all the foliage with a filbert brush and if you guys want to learn more techniques of how to use a filbert brush um, or any other brush I've got lots of tutorials where I kind of just go in depth and the whole um, video is all about paint brushes techniques brush strokes and also color mixing 
So here I'm working on um, my window box. Again, it's misshapen, it's not perfectly straight. I like that, it adds character, but that's just my personal preference. So if it bugs you, make sure that you measure yours out and get it straight the first time if you, if you like it. That's kind of the painting that you wanna go for. Okay, just gonna go right underneath and above, making these boards that go across stand out by adding some black, again, on the top and the bottom. Then I'll just add a couple little dots inside um, just for the screws or little hooks, whatever they are, um, or little nails, and then kind of add a few little lines here and there, pulling across just to uh, break up that window box a little bit. Alright, so now using the same filbert brush, I'm going to take a little bit of black, then white, on a slant from the corner, pointing in down towards that door, a line for the railing, and then all the little um, railing pieces here, just up and down, just pulling really quickly, not thinking too much about it. They're not going to be per perfectly straight, but I find that if I take time and try to make each one really straight, that's when they end up looking really crooked. So it works best for me to just go, literally go with the flow and do them really quickly here. Just one after another. So it kind of looks like a palm leaf or a comb, something kind of like that. And then right there at the bottom, just clean it up and kind of pull and curl over and sort of flick. It's going to be mostly in shadow, but I'll add a few more highlights and uh, with the white and then black for some more contrast and depth and shadow. Time to come in with the steps now and just white pulling a skinny line and then a thicker line down. So skinny line across, thicker line down. So more, just use the full width of the brush, press, pull and flick, just like you're painting reflections in the water.
Okay, after adding a few more highlights, I'm going to come in and add some more little pots. These are going to be smaller because they're a bit farther away. So here on the right side, we'll have one that's taller and narrower, and then a one that's a little bit rounder and shorter next to it. I like to change it up and add a few different shapes just for fun, and then take extra white and add some highlights. Now I've switched over to a liner brush and I'm going to do some scroll work above the window. Um, these are really, really fun to do. You can make any design up that you want. Sorry that my hand is in the way for part of the filming of this, but uh, it's really basic, simple scrolls and you can see in just a moment and it, you can decide if it's something that you'd like to add to your painting and you can make fewer scrolls if you want but I think in, in this painting it really adds a lot it was fun and I love doing this it reminds me of all the um, places in Europe that I've been to and seen this kind of design around railings around doors on doors I did want to add some to the door but then I decided that uh, with a window and the flowers that that would have been a bit too much so I opted out and just kept it over here on and above the window After adding a little bit of scroll work there on the railing, the top of the railing, I'm going to switch over to one of my angle mop brushes. You can use any mop brush you want. I just really like these angle mop brushes lately because they're a bit narrower um, down on the bottom and I have a little bit more control and can make different shapes with them. So I'm just taking um, black and white to make a light gray first and then I'm going to highlight with a little bit more white. I'm not getting my brush wet ahead of time. I'm not washing it out in between either. That ruins the shape when you get it wet. And I'll just add a little bit here and see how I can kind of make them look a little bit narrower by using this. Now, if you don't have one of these brushes, you can um, use a fan brush or a filbert brush. And if you don't, if you're just a beginner and you don't really have a lot of brushes and you don't have any of those that I mentioned, you can also just stipple with whatever kind of brush that you have. It just may be a little bit different looking and not as soft looking, but you can definitely um, achieve any kind of foliage using any brush, trust me. So I'll add foliage to that window box and all of the pots. Now for the one pot, there's one, one pot in particular that I'm going to be using a different brush for and you'll see in just a moment, but I'm going to come in and add some foliage here going up and around the side of the staircase. I thought this kind of made it look more lived in and set those stairs in there a little bit better and um, it always adds a little bit more character and to be honest, I just really love painting foliage. I think that it's so satisfying. Ever since watching Bob Ross as a little kid, um, I've been hooked with these mop brushes. Uh, if you're wondering about these brushes in particular, I'm using this mop brush um, with a rainbow kind of iridescent handle. These are cheap makeup brushes from Amazon. I got a whole set 
I was going to use them for my makeup and then I was um, painting in a different location one day where I didn't have any of my supplies and I was desperate to paint. Um, <laughs> other artists out there watching you guys can, can hear me, right? You can um, probably uh, understand where I'm coming from. When you want to paint, you need to paint and you'll use anything you've got. So I decided to use <laughs> my makeup brushes and I was so surprised at how excellent they were. And I've used these brushes for over a year now and I haven't had any bristles come out of them. Um, I don't, I'm not affiliate with Amazon and I don't get paid for anything, but I will leave a link below. Many of you guys are getting these brushes because you um, uh, wanted to try them and you guys are saying the same thing, how it's really helping you with your foliage. They're just the perfect texture, softness, and they make the greatest uh, foliage shapes. So I'll leave a link below. If I forget, just leave a comment. And I'm just adding some more foliage, kind of going up above the door from there. Maybe it's some wisteria. Um, and because I did this painting all in blue, I want you guys to know that you can go over in many different colors later on. This is just grayscale first. You can leave it in black and white. Some people prefer black and white. I think it's very pretty and classy, um, but you can do any color over top after. So if you wanted the wisteria to be purple, you could just choose that area and go over with purple. Um, but if you add any white with your colors after, it won't work as a filter. That's going to totally change everything so you want to just pick color and use a bit of water with it you don't want to add any white for your final filter or glaze I'm not using a glazing medium I'm going to get the asked that question quite a bit um, I'll, you don't need a glazing medium you can just take a little bit of water and dilute your heavy bodied acrylic paint and go over and use it just like that. Just make sure your painting in black and white is completely dry first. So I'm gonna add little details now with my liner brush, little uh, flowers here and there. And then I'm gonna be coming in on the other side for that other pot that has nothing in it yet with my rake fan brush. And I'll be making some palm leaves. And they're really, really fun and easy to create using that brush. I've been using that brush for a lot of different things lately. I've got a horse tutorial coming up. Um, where I'm using that for a little bit of the, the fur on and hair on the horse. Now, if you guys want to see my videos, um, if you don't want to wait for them to come out on YouTube, then you can see them right away. I've got uh, like 200. I've, I'm always posting and up, uploading lots to pa Patreon um, daily. So you guys, I'll leave a link below where you can join for as little as $5 a month. And it gets you early access, extra content, and a uh, chance to win a painting of mine um, at the end of each month. And plus it also really, really helps to uh, fund the videos that I make, the time I take to make all these videos and content for you guys. So it's much, much appreciated. I'm going to start painting a palm leaf over here a few with my um, liner brush and it can take a little bit longer to do this but if you don't have a fan brush or a rake brush you can do it in a liner brush. I wanted to show you guys how but I'm going to be switching over to another brush here in a minute because I just prefer um, to use another brush for my palm leaves but I like to show you guys as much as I can and pack as much as I can into each video for you so you really benefit from watching these videos. So this next brush that I'm using is another filbert brush um, and you can get a rake as a filbert brush or a fan brush. I want to mention that too because sometimes I'll be using a rake filbert brush in my videos. So just in case you guys are wondering is that a rake filbert or a rake 
um, or just a regular filbert. They both work really well and they're really um, beneficial for palm leaves and all sorts of things. So I'm going to do a few over here. Then I'm going to also add a little bit of black in between or some contrast and shadow. This, this is my rake fan brush I'm using guys and like I said earlier I got this one at Michael's but I've seen them online um, the brand is Royal Langnickel in case you're wondering but there's lots of different brands out there it's just the one that I'm using and it's a really great one you want to use water with this one it won't work as well with trying to use just straight paint you need a little bit of water in there like any liner brush to help that paint flow so it's really fun and instant and satisfying to use this brush. I really recommend it. Let me know if you guys have one and how you like using yours. And if you have any um, thing that I haven't thought of using it for in a painting yet, leave a comment below. I'm just going to come in and start tapping with the corner of my rake fan brush here just for some foliage and then just kind of trail off make it look like there's some vines kind of just trailing down there and, and cascading. I'll add a few more little details here and there before I dry this off and come in with my final uh, filter with cobalt blue. And I'm over now to my little filbert brush, just going to make some softer looking little foliage taps here and adding a little bit of black to break that up a little bit, creating some shadow, making it look 3D. Now once I finish adding the final touches to this black and white version, I'm going to wait till everything is completely dry, like I said. Um, to speed up time, I used a hair dryer and left that out of the video. I don't think you guys want to see... Uh, five to ten minutes of me using a hair dryer <laughs> so just wait till it's all dry now it's all dry I've got water my filbert brush you can use any brush you want that you feel comfortable with and I'm taking this beautiful cobalt blue it is Winsor & Newton the brand just in case you're curious um, ultra ultramarine blue is very similar you can use that as well or like I've said many many times any color that you want I would love to do this painting again and again in a few different colors. I'd love to try it in red, like a bright, bright scarlet red or crimson red. I think pink would be really pretty, um, magenta, and yellow. Uh, probably, I would like to do in any color. I just am such a lover of color. 
that I don't think I'd be able to stop just with a few. I'd want to try them all. <laughs> and also, it would be nice to do one using a lot of different colors. So I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this and got really inspired. I can't wait to see your versions on the Facebook group. Thanks so much for all your support. And check out the links below for more. Happy painting, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!